I'm very excited because it's finally clear tonight. So I've gotten out my six inch refractor. It's on my Lasmandi mount and Artemis, my 12 inch Mick Cassegrain telescope. Yes, one is six inches and one is 12, but I'm gonna compare how does Saturn look in a six inch refractor versus a 12 inch Mick Cassegrain. Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. In this episode, we're going to look at Saturn with a 6-inch refractor and a 12-inch Mick Cassegrain telescope. I got the idea for this video from Joe Jaguar, who asked me if I thought it looked better in the refractor. So, I thought, why not make an episode and find out? Now, I have to admit that I think it's going to look better in the Schmidt Cassegrain. After all, it's twice the aperture. And it's a Schmidt Cassegrain, so it has a very long focal length, 3048 millimeters. It's F10, but it can reach very high magnifications, which is what you want on the planets if the CN is good. Whereas this six inch refractor, it's 150 millimeters and 1200 millimeter focal length, it's F8. It's not going to have nearly the light gathering capability or the ability to reach as high of a magnification as the Schmidt Cassegrain will. But we're going to look at Saturn in both and see. I know it's subjective, but I'll tell you what I think anyway. Whether Saturn looks better in the 12 inch Schmidt Cassegrain or the 6 inch refractor. I've had a couple of seasoned amateur astronomers tell me that the best looks they ever had at planets were in refractors and refractors are known for having very sharp images, so let's find out. Okay, I'm looking at Saturn first with the six inch refractor. It's 1200 millimeter focal length, and I'm starting out with a 24 millimeter eyepiece, so that's only 50 times magnification, and it looks nice and crisp, but it's tiny, so I'm, going to increase the magnification. The CN is much better than when I looked at it at opposition. It looked horrific. So I uh, am going to just go right to my highest magnification, which is this three millimeter Teleview Delight, which will give me 400 times magnification, and that's as magnified as I can go. I do have a three time Barlow, but even with a 10 millimeter, that would only be 360 times. And this uh, will give me 400. Now I, <laughs> I could put the Barlow with this, but then it would be 900 and I wouldn't even be able to focus. So no point in doing that. So this is at 400 times magnification. I can see a couple of the moons. And it looks pretty good. It's it's very crisp. I have to say, it looks pretty darn good. Now, I need to look at it a long time to get the best look and wait for any turbulence to settle down. But in order to compare, I'm going to have to go back and forth quickly. So that looks pretty darn good. So now let's go over to the 12 inch telescope that has a 3048 millimeter focal length, so I'll be able to magnify a lot more, but only when the CN is good. So I'll just leave that three millimeter in there now, going over to the 12 inch telescope to compare. Now I'm looking at Saturn in the 12 inch Schmidt Cassegrain. I'm starting with a 32 millimeter Teleview Plossel, and so Saturn is small, but I can see four of the moons and I can see the band in the middle. Uh, this is 95 times magnification and it looks pretty good. I forgot I had these orthoscopic eyepieces I bought a while back. Uh, I think they're Botter Planetarium. This one's 10 millimeter and that will give me 304 times magnification. So let's see. How that looks. Uh, 
That looks wonderful. I also have a, not that, I have a six millimeter orthoscopic. Uh, it might be too much magnification, but the CN looks pretty good tonight. Why couldn't it have looked like this when I made my Saturn video? But I'm grateful. I'm very grateful. It looks really good. Okay, I'm going to turn off the light and study it for a while and then go back to the refractor and look for that six millimeter eyepiece. I forgot to bring my six millimeter orthoscopic eyepiece. I grabbed a 9.7 instead. So I just have this 10 millimeter orthoscopic. They're best for the planets. And just for fun, I put this three time Barlow with the 10 millimeter that gives me 914 times magnification. And I can focus, but um, I, it's, it's well beyond the capacity, the useful magnification of this telescope. But Saturn is huge in the high piece, but I need to, it's too much. I don't even think the three millimeter will work, but I'll go get it just for fun and see how Saturn looks with that. Oh, wow. I've got this three millimeter Teleview Delight. <laughs> that gives me a thousand fourteen times magnification. Saturn is gigantic in the eyepiece. And I can focus, but um, it's not. It's not super clear, but <laughs> it looks pretty good. But I'm gonna have to go to something lower. <laughs> I think this 10 millimeter arthroscopic looks pretty good. Uh, so I have to find two eyepieces that will give me the same magnification though. Let me go figure out some math to do that so I can do a direct uh, comparison at the same magnification. Okay, I found a couple more eyepieces to try to even it out. So the refractor has the three millimeter D-Light, which is a very nice eyepiece, and it's at 400 times magnification, and it looks pretty sharp. For this telescope, I have a seven millimeter Nagler and that is 435 times magnification, so a little bit more than the refractor, and it looked pretty good. But since that's a little bit more, I'm gonna put this not nearly as nice eyepiece, a Stellar View. I mean, it's nice, but it's not as nice as that D-Light. Stellar View 8 millimeter eyepiece, and that will give me uh, 385 times magnifications, or 386. So pretty close to 400, not quite as magnified, but now to make it an even comparison, I'm going to have to stare at the planet because you, or I stare at the planet and wait for it to settle down and get the clearest view. So I'm gonna stare at it with this eight millimeter eyepiece at 386 times magnification, then I'll go back to the refractor and stare at it at 400 times magnification and see which one looks sharper or better. Be back in a minute. Okay, I looked at Saturn for quite a while in the six inch refractor with a three millimeter eyepiece at 400 times magnification. And it looks very sharp, very crisp. I believe I could see the Cassini division even. So it looks very good in this telescope. The CN is excellent tonight. According to the manufacturer of this telescope, Skywatcher, the highest useful magnification is 295 times. So I am well past the <laughs> highest useful magnification at 400 times. So the CN has to be good for you to do that with your telescope. Sometimes you can exceed the useful magnification on a night of very good seeing. So I got lucky with the good seeing tonight and could push the magnification to 400 times. Normally, I would not be able to do that. 
I hardly ever am able to use this three millimeter eyepiece for that very reason. So part of the reason I'm seeing it so well is because the seeing is so good, but can't take anything away from it. It looks really good in this six inch refractor. Very crisp and very sharp. I'm gonna try to put the camera on there and show you what it looks like in the camera. I'm not sure how useful that is to you, the viewer, to tell you how it looks to me in the eyepiece, but personally it looks very good. The seeing is what it's all about when it comes to the planets, but I give it an A+. It looks really good in here. Now let's go over to the Schmidt Cassegrain. I looked at Saturn for a very long time in the Schmidt Cassegrain 12 inch telescope and I looked with the seven millimeter Nagler and it didn't look good. And I've never liked this eyepiece. I don't know why. It just things just have never looked very sharp to me in this eyepiece. I don't like it. And I looked with the eight millimeter stellar view and it looked pretty good, but it wasn't as sharp as the refractor at 400 times. This would be 386 times, but um, it just wasn't quite as crisp. So I went down to um, 10 millimeters, so that would be uh, three, 304 times magnification, and then it looked very sharp. I can't explain it, but it looked as sharp as the refractor did it 400 times. I don't know why, but um, definitely the refractor was outstanding. Part of it is that the planets always look best when the seeing is good or excellent, and it was excellent tonight. But I have to say, wow, I'm very impressed with how it looked in that six inch refractor. It's not always possible. It's hardly ever possible to go to 400 times with that six inch refractor. With this telescope, yes, because it has such a long focal length and that's the nice thing about it. You can get very high magnifications. I just don't like this Nagler, but it looks very good and very sharp with this 10 millimeter orthoscopic, which is an eyepiece that is meant for planetary viewing. So, I uh, will also put a camera on here and show you what it looks like in the camera. If that's useful, the planet looked great in that six inch refractor. I have to say that Saturn looked a little bit sharper in the refractor at 400 times magnification. So for this <laughs> comparison anyway, I would have to give it to the refractor. It's not always the case though. I got really lucky with the excellent seeing and we'll see how it looks in the cameras, but, uh, and it looked good in the 12 inch too. Not taking anything away from Artemis, <laughs> but I have to give it to the refractor on this evening anyway. I had to wait an hour for that cloud to pass. It finally passed and I got some video, but I'm not sure that the video or pictures will tell you much about the difference between what I saw in the refractor versus the Schmidt Cassegrain. It has more to do with the camera and <laughs> my lack of skills in processing. But I'll show you what I got anyway. I was kind of upset that the refractor beat Artemis, my beloved Schmidt Cassegrain telescope on this comparison on Saturn. Not really, but the reason the refractor was sharper and showed more detail on Saturn in this comparison was because to see planets well requires two things, good seeing and high magnification. And I got lucky with a night of not good, but excellent seeing and that allowed me to get a very high magnification on that refractor that I can't normally get. I hardly ever get to use that three millimeter D-Light eyepiece because it requires a night of superb seeing. And using it on the refractor allowed me to see Saturn at 400 times magnification, well beyond the manufacturer's um, uh, statement that the highest useful magnification for the refractor was 295 times. 
So that allowed me to see detail and it just looked sharper on the refractor. It looked good in this schmidt cassegrain too. And I was beyond this telescope's highest useful magnification as well. The manufacturer says 300 times and I was looking at Saturn at 381 times with the eight millimeter eyepiece. It just wasn't quite as sharp in this telescope. But that doesn't mean that the refractor would always beat out this telescope. In fact, it would not. And the reason is that it's only six inches of aperture and this one's 12 and it has far more light gathering capability than that six inch refractor so that I can see faint deep sky objects with this 12 inch telescope that I absolutely cannot see with that refractor. I cannot see Stefan's quintet with that six inch refractor. I tried. I cannot see the mice. No way. <laughs> no way. I don't even think I could see NGC 5053 in that six inch telescope because it doesn't have adequate light gathering capability. So yes, it won on Saturn, but for faint deep sky objects, it wouldn't be able to keep up with this telescope. The limiting stellar magnitude for the six inch refractor is 13.1 and the limiting stellar magnitude for this Schmidt Cassegrain is 15.1 one or something like that. So you can see a lot fainter stars and fainter objects with this bigger aperture telescope. So the refractor won on Saturn, but for faint deep sky objects, no, it can't keep up. And that's just a function of the aperture and light gathering capability. But Saturn looked great in both telescopes, but the refractor was just a little bit sharper and showed a little more detail. So that's it for now. I'll see y'all soon. Until then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.